If you followed us for any length of time here on YouTube or for a bigger length of time on Instagram, you know that we like to build walls as big as we can, side as much as we can to eliminate ladder work later. In this particular case, it's a nice, easy pick. 44 foot wall, 42 foot of it is actually gable. You'll see how that fits together in a moment. If you watched our previous video, you've seen how we side the gable end while it's on the ground. Now, it's time to lift the wall. Now, before we do this, Kyle and I are rigging certified. We're forklift certified. The brackets that are holding the wall are also certified, designed by an engineer, so this is all legal. We go through the lift, figure out the weights, all that good stuff. Had to move a couple of boats to make room for the forklift there on the left. But now you can see why we double top plate our walls instead of using the rafter. It's an easier pick, easier to grab. But did you notice how stiff that wall stays? You can see it's a little bit bent here, but that 12 inch by 16 foot long LP soffit up along the gable, that's what keeps the wall stiff. So we've been using this particular system with very little change. In fact, I can't think of a change that we've made in about the last 10 years. I think the only thing that we've changed is that row of fire blocking. We use four by six for the last maybe like four years instead of two by. And part of it is, is it gives us more to grab with the wall sheathing, but it really helps us to stay stiff during the lift. So it's not needed structurally. It's not needed for fire blocking. Two by blocking would be plenty, but the four by blocking just keeps things a little stiffer. And then when we've got our different rows of wall sheathing, we have more meat to grab when we're nailing it off. We use all eight foot sheets because this is zip R6. R6 zip panels are one inch of poly ISO insulation with the 7 16 panel bonded. So that only comes out here in eight foot sheets. So block line at ceiling, eight foot down another block line, and then we'll connect from that down to the rim. And then of course we go upper block line to the very top. Now one thing is take these slow. So Kyle's, Shane's off to the side, we're all prepped to be able to brace it. I'm in the machine because I'm experienced. Kyle does all the signaling, so he's, you know, he's been, we've been a two man crew for 15 years. And that's just the way our roles have worked out. So Kyle's keeping an eye on everything. I'm making sure I don't hit any power lines, <laughs> you know, hit any boats, and just nice and easy on the controls. You gotta feather the accelerator to keep the pumps going, especially as the machine gets older. We have a 30 foot strap that's connected to those straps. Keep the pick points so that your angle off of vertical is 30 degrees or less. And that way you get the full rating on your straps. There's some great YouTube videos, by the way, as far as rigging. Now you can see every once in a while we just stop. Kyle does a once around. We communicate a lot. By the way, the lift here is in real time. It always feels faster in person than it does when you're watching it. Feels like slow motion right now, but when you're in the machine. So there it is, stands up nice and stiff. Now, one thing I didn't show in the video because it's a little tedious, but we actually put the boom where we wanted it and we measured from the tip of the truss chip to the ground and we kind of refined that so that all I really had to do was go up and I could boom in a little bit and then we can, we can shorten the strap, so to speak, or the um, center of gravity, I don't know how you'd say that. But basically I can tilt up or down to lengthen the stick without booming out. Now when it comes to bracing these walls, make sure that you use as long a brace as you can. We like to use structural screws to cleats in the ground and typically through the brace into the um, into a stud. We always start from the middle and work out and we try to be really strategic about where those land on the ground so that we can frame our interior walls around them without them needing to come out. Now it's probably hard to see in the video, but we plumb all the walls with a laser. So just off your snap line on the floor, we pick an arbitrary four inches. Uh, right there you could see Kyle was cutting that brace along the floor to get a nice angle. And that lets us get a couple more screws into the thing. Now when I say screws, I'm talking about the big timber screws. They're very strong. Everything gets fastened with those so that it won't rip off. One time years and years ago, about 10 years ago, we had a microburst to tear a wall right off the floor. I had probably eight braces. I actually went out after work and put some more braces on it. And it just, it left the bottom plate, but just ripped the sheeting. We were able to salvage the whole thing, but in the meantime, we uh, stopped using nails. <laughs> and we started using nice long Simpson Strong Tie SDWS, I believe they are, five inch screws. 
with the nice big heads. Now, all of us end up being too short except for Kyle, Mr. Six Foot Four. So Shane thought he could get it. Nope. <laughs> to boot Mountain down, and Kyle ended up. It just needed, you know, you don't want to stand on the top rung. Many years ago, I had a picture in the Journal of Light Construction where Kyle was standing on the top rung. It didn't even cross our minds back then. You know, we were young and dumb. Now we're old and, and a little less dumb. Now, one thing is we frame this rake wall. The wall that would go right in front of the camera right now is already framed and it's out of the picture. And the wall where Shane's at in the distance by the sprinter, well, you'll see this in just a moment. You can kind of see it leaning up there on the right. Those walls were already built so that we could immediately grab them, drop them into place, and then our, our corners or our very outside edges would all be braced up. So we've learned don't build the big wall first and then have it just up there for a week. We build all the other walls and then set them off to the side. So you'll see that in just a moment. It's kind of actually nice. Then you're just putting together a puzzle. You finally get to the end and instead of now building all the rest of the exterior walls, build this one last. Just make sure you have room. That's kind of our number one priority. Make sure we got room for the big wall. Obviously, it takes the most room. We like to actually start in the garage, build all those walls, and then work toward the big wall. And that way when it goes up, you can brace it really well. You don't have to worry about the weather. You know, it seems like these other things always go up on a Friday too. And I don't like to leave those over the weekend. So this took about 10 minutes to grab this wall, set it into place, get it secured, and then it was lunchtime. So if you get into building big walls, take a rigging class. Um, watch some videos on YouTube, buy one of the little rigging books. You don't have to be an expert like those guys with multi-pick commercial type stuff, at least not typically for us. But there's a lot of people on YouTube that show some very unsafe practices. Basically, you do not want those straps spread way out. You really want to keep them as close to vertical, within 30 degrees of vertical, if you can. Uh, oftentimes, you have way more rating on the strap, but your rating goes down very quickly once you start getting out past that 30 degrees off vertical. So be careful. If you follow some of those young guys with big followings on YouTube, don't imitate their rigging. In fact, I'll probably get some comments here from professional you know, commercial guys that do this stuff all day long. Uh, anytime we hire a crane, we talk to the crane operator. We try to learn as much as we can. So just as an example, that wall on the left weighed about 4,000 pounds, but half of that stayed on the floor at all times. So really the machine was only seeing 2,000 pounds, but we're rigged for well over 12,000 pounds. So we have, have the capacity there in case it comes off the floor. By the way, the bottom plate on that wall was only toenail to the line. So as you watch this whole video, it's just toenailed. And part of the reason why we do that, if we strap it, we could unnecessarily stress the rigging if we start to go against that. We found that it's better just to allow it to come off the floor if that happens, because we're rigged for it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. It just shows how much time you save, but be safe. Be safe out there. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. Oh, one last thing. May the fourth be with you. Revenge of the Fifth, Rise of the Sixth? I don't know. But it was Star Wars Day, so we had to stay after and commemorate. Do a couple of awesome Framers pictures, cuz we're cool like that. Cool like that. <laughs>